everything we've been working on has been about right triangles and we're going to continue that concept today and we're going to work with something called the distance formula and the midpoint formula so big difference that is going to happen today is we are only going to be given two ordered pairs for points we're not going to have the triangle drawn for us at all and so say we have this ordered pair p is negative one negative one q is two four and that's all the information that we have and we need to calculate the length of the line that goes from p to q without drawing it well Drawing it would be helpful because we could probably make a right triangle and we could use the Pythagorean theorem, but no one really wants to go through the hassle of drawing that coordinate plane because it takes a long time. So mathematicians figured out this formula that you could use if you were given two points and it's called the distance formula. And it's a long formula. It looks really complicated, but if you really think about what's happening in it, it's not that bad. So really what we're doing within the distance formula is we're finding the distance between or the difference between our X values and our Y values. And when I say difference, that means it has to be subtraction. So I want to see how far apart are my X's how far apart are my y's now it's a complicated formula that the mathematicians figured out you don't have to understand all of that but if you think about i'm finding the difference between those x's but i do have to square it i'm finding the differences between those y's i do have to square those so we're doing the same thing to both and then at the end we're going to add those two together so if i look at my x's I have two different X's, one for my P, one for my Q. And I just call the P X1 and the Q X2. And if I go to find the difference, notice that's a negative. And I'm going to do X2 minus X1. So I do 2 minus, but remember x one's a negative number, so 2 minus negative 1. Then for my, my uh, Q, my y value, I'm going to do the same thing. You have to keep the ordered pair in the same order. So since I started with q, I have to start with q there. So I'm going to do y minus negative 1 when I substitute those values in. Now, we have to solve inside the radical sign first, and we have to follow order of operations. So that means I have to do my parentheses first. I can't do my exponents first. So first I'm going to do 2 minus negative 1, which is 3 and I'm going to do 4 minus negative 1, which is 5. So now I've cleared the parentheses. Now I can do my exponents. So my exponent, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. Now, this is addition. So when it's addition, I can't put my radical sign over each individual. That's only for, for multiplication. So for addition, I have to continue to solve within that uh, that's radical sign itself. So I'm going to pull those two numbers together and I get the square root of 34. Now I think to myself, can I factor anything out? Well, I know it's 1 times 34 and it's 2 times 17. None of those are going to make perfect squares. So I just leave my, my answer as D equals the square root of 34. Now that means that distance is the square root of 34, which for most of us is hard to really understand. But the thing is, is we could put that into the calculator and it's going to give us a decimal number. So this distance isn't a whole number, it's a decimal number. And it's perfectly fine for us to leave it as a square root um, because in math, that is the same as calling it as a decimal. So lots of kids feel uncomfortable doing that. If you really want to change it to a decimal, you can, but most, most math books would take that as an answer. So now I know the distance of that line. Well, what if I want to find the exact center point? Well, that would be my midpoint formula. And we know that every point on this line has an ordered pair that shows its location. We have an X value and we have a Y value. Well, when we use the midpoint formula, it gives us an ordered pair. So what you're looking for is that exact ordered pair that I could plot the point, and that would be exactly the middle of that line. So because it's an ordered pair, the formula looks like an ordered pair. And what we're going to do is find basically the average or the mean of each point. And we know that when we find the average, 
we add the two points together and divide by the number of, of points that we added. So I'm gonna add my x1 plus my x2 and then cut it in half to find the exact midpoint. And I'm gonna add my y1 and add my y2 together, cut it in half and find that exact midpoint, and that's gonna give me that ordered pair. So I go back and I'm gonna use the same values. So I'm gonna do negative one plus negative two, um, I'm sorry, negative one plus two, and I get one. Now I'm gonna cut it in half, so I take it as one half. Now you can leave it like this because I know what one half looks like. I could just come over to a halfway between zero and one. If you want to change it to a decimal, you could. You could change it to 0 0.5, but this is perfectly acceptable. So then I'm gonna do my y value, so I'm gonna do negative one plus four, which is three, and I'm gonna cut it in half. And again, I, I can leave it as that fraction. I know that's the same as one and a half. So when I go to plot my points, I'm going to go to one half as my x, I'm going to go to one and a half as my y. I put my mark there. That would be the exact center point of that, that line. That would be my midpoint. So very easy to work with. They look complicated, uh, but don't let it scare you. If you think about what's really happening with these formulas and what the information is that it will give you, it's a lot easier than trying to draw and estimate where these points are. And it probably takes off a lot of time for the math itself just by using the formula. So dive in. Be confident you're gonna do well with this. Have fun with the midpoint and the distance formulas.